Good evening, and welcome to online worship with Atonement Lutheran Church. We continue our study of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane as we ponder on his passion. Tonight we ponder on the passion of his soul for us. We begin our worship with the opening hymn number 98, Jesus, I Will Ponder Now.
Together we confess our sins. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not loved you with all my heart. In what I have done and left undone, I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved my brothers and sisters as myself. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. I am truly sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I beg for your mercy, O Lord. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us. Cleanse me from my sins. Release me from my guilt. Grant me your Holy Spirit to amend my sinful life. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all our sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed our guilt forever. We are his own dear children. May God give us strength to live according to his will. Amen. We join to pray. O oh, Jesus Christ, help us to ponder your holy passion as you make the atoning sacrifice not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. By your suffering, you have made us whole. Preserve us in this faith until at last we see the fruit of your passion when our sufferings are over in your heavenly kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Passion reading this evening is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 27. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said. For I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priests picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why it has been called the field of blood to this day. That what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner who was named Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. 
For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime he, has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. This is the passion history of our Lord. We continue by singing the hymn of the day, hymn number 117, verses 1, 3 through 5, and verse 7, O dearest Jesus. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this evening is based on the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. 
Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went a little farther, fell on his face, and prayed. He said, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, So you were not able to stay awake with me for one hour? Watch and pray, so that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass from me unless I drink it, may your will be done. Again he returned and found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. He left them again, went away and prayed a third time. He said the same words as before. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. This is the gospel of our Lord. Silence strangles the courtroom. The jury is filing back into the jury box. Monique Kitts is on trial for hiring a hitman to murder her husband. Judge Robin Free waits for the last juror to enter, and then he asks the foreman, Have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. In the case of the state of Louisiana versus Monique O. Kitts, How do you find? We, the jury, find the defendant, Monique Kitts, and you can't even hear the verdict over the wailing and the weeping. Guilty. If you know my brother and me, you might be surprised that we don't always get along, or didn't always get along when we were growing up, at least. Maybe that doesn't surprise you very much, but... There were times, as in every household, where, well, teasing and playing went a little too far. And you know what happens when teasing and playing goes a little too far. Big brother pushes down little brother. Little brother starts to cry. And big brother says, hit me back. Don't tell mom. Hit me back. We'll make it even. I didn't want my mom to find out because I was going to get in trouble. I was afraid of the punishment That would happen to me because of what I did. Tonight we see Jesus suffering in the garden. It's not yet time for the bruises and the beatings or the mockings or the whippings. That will come. But already in the garden, Jesus is suffering guilt and fear in his soul. And so tonight we ponder on the suffering of Jesus and his soul. Jesus brings his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. He says to eight of the eleven who remain, stay here while I go over there and pray. He takes three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, along with him. The same three whom he took with him when he raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead. Whom he took up the mountain of transfiguration where they saw his face glowing like the sun and his clothes as white as the light, where they saw Moses and Elijah standing there with him, where they heard the Father's voice, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. But tonight Jesus' face looks much different. Instead of shining with joy, it is overcome with sorrow. And Jesus' words match 
how he looks. He says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He is so anguished, so churned up inside that he feels like he cannot go on. Already Jesus feels the fires of hell lapping his cheeks. He carries the weight of the world's sin on his shoulders. Picture the guilt you felt for hurting someone or for something you've done. For when you've secretly sinned to hide your shame. For when you've turned your back on God. And now multiply that guilt and multiply it again. This is the guilt Jesus is feeling in his soul as he anticipates the coming punishment, a punishment he does not deserve. And with this guilt comes fear. Fear of the beatings and the whippings, of the mocking from the soldiers, of the crown of thorns they're going to place on his head and push down into his skull of the nails that will be put into his hands to fix him to the cross, of the struggle to breathe as he hangs there. And this is the worst that human beings can do to him because God has his punishment prepared as well. All the torments of hell, hell where the fire does not go out and the worm does not die. God forsaking him. What little relief his disciples might have offered, they do not give him. After he prays, he goes and he finds them, and they are asleep. These men who said they would die with him do not even stay awake long enough to suffer alongside him. They fall asleep. Jesus must go it alone. They fail to do their part to bear even a little bit of Jesus' sufferings. The only relief Jesus can find is in his Father. This is the way it must be. Christ alone must bear bear the cross. And so he prays to his Father, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, Yet not as I will, but as you will. He makes no demand of his father. He doesn't shirk his mission. He only sees that if his father can find another way, surely he will take this cup from him. But there is not another way. And so he prays, My father, if it is not possible, for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it. May your will be done. Always conforming his will to his father's, trusting his father. Though guilt and fear fill his soul, he presses on. A third time he prays, your will be done. An angel comes to strengthen him and soon Physical pain will be added to the anguish of his soul. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. This is your guilt he carries, not his own. It's the guilt that washes over you for no reason in the middle of the night. The guilt that comes over you, and even though it happened a long time ago, your face still flushes, your heart still begins to beat rapidly. It's the guilt you feel when you see that face you've hurt. The guilt that you feel still, that you can't let go of, even as many times as you've heard the words, all your sins are forgiven. This is your fear he carries. The fear of punishment, whether by God or by someone else. The fear you try to hide under a smile, thinking you're getting away with it maybe. 
The fear of knowing what your deeds truly deserve. You might even look at the, the virus that's going around and saying, yes, God, this is what I deserve. Here in the garden, Jesus carries your guilt and your fear for you. We might sometimes think that it is our duty to carry the guilt and fear. That we have to make ourselves suffer to show just how sorry we are for our, our sins. But look at his disciples, the ones who said they would even die with him. They cannot suffer alongside Jesus. They can't share in his suffering. Neither can you. Jesus does not ask you to punish yourself by holding on to your guilt and fear. No, he takes them from you. He bears them for you. He takes them to their end by suffering the punishment that you deserve. The suffering of Jesus' soul brings peace to your soul. His soul says to yours, rest, my child. That guilt that you feel, I have taken it on myself. I have carried it. That fear of punishment you feel because of your guilt, I too have borne that. And I have taken it to its end and suffered the punishment for you. Jovan Jackson was on trial for possession of marijuana and selling it for a profit. And so once again, the jury filed in. The judge asked, in the case of the people versus Jovan Jackson, how do you find? And the foreman of the jury stood up and he said, in the case of the people of California versus Jovan Jackson, we find the defendant not guilty. If you looked at Jovan Jackson in that, that moment, you would see tears streaming down his face. Not guilty! He didn't have to fear the punishment that came with that crime. Imagine how much sweeter it would be if Jovan had known the verdict before even going to trial. Not having to dread the punishment at all. Not knowing that he would be declared innocent. This is what we have. Jesus has borne the guilt and the fear and the punishment and the pain in our place so that we would be declared not guilty through faith in him. He has taken away the punishment. And so now there is nothing to fear. God is with us. Our soul is is at peace. Tonight, take your guilt and fear to Jesus. He bears the cross for you. Let them go. Rest in this assurance that because Jesus has borne your guilt and fear for you in his soul, your soul will rest at peace with God forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We now join together to sing the song of Mary.
We pray. O oh Jesus, you willingly took on our flesh to suffer and die for us. In the garden, you allow us to witness your sufferings. Remind us that because of your passion, we will never suffer the torments of hell, but rather will live in peace and safety forever with you in heaven. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now sing the song of Simeon. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We close our worship this evening with the last hymn, number 104, Go to Dark Gethsemane.